Stone Mountain is one of Georgia's most visited and most easily recognized attractions, but it's not the only rock outcrop in our state. On this episode, we'll explore the natural diversity and opportunities to enjoy Panola Mountain and Arabia Mountain, which may be smaller than their well-known sister, but hold just as much natural wonder. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible by a grant from Mary Hall Singleton and by the Imlay Foundation. Towering 700 feet above the Piedmont region of Georgia and covering an area over a mile long and half a mile wide, the majesty of Stone Mountain is hard to ignore. Every year, thousands of tourists flock to view the familiar Confederate memorial carving, the largest relief carving in the world ride the cable car to the summit and enjoy the breathtaking view. Stone Mountain is one of the largest granite outcrops in North America and has earned our respect and attention. But just south of Stone Mountain lie two often overlooked treasures which hold just as much natural splendor. Arabia Mountain and Panola Mountain are two of Georgia's best kept secrets. We talk about the three sisters of Stone Mountain being the North Sister, Arabia being the Central, and then Panola being the South. Stone Mountain is actually run by an authority, which is not a part of the state park system. Stone Mountain is geared toward more of your commercial opportunities for outdoor recreation. Panola being a state park, it actually birthed the Georgia Conservancy. The, the desire to protect that property. People were beginning to see the growth patterns of Atlanta. They were beginning to be concerned about the uh, protection of the endangered plants that are a part of the habitat at Panola. Arabia Mountain is much more open to the public. The public can access the, the crest of the mountain, whereas Panola, because of its uniqueness, has more of a guided connectivity. You have to work through the, the park to have access to it. And that's because it's a conservation park. It's designated that the purpose of the preservation of that land was to make sure that we were conserving those resources. It's estimated that more than 90% of 12,000 acres of exposed granite in the southeast is located in Georgia. Arabia, Panola, and Stone Mountain are monadnocks, emerging like rock islands from a flat landscape. All three began buried deep within the earth and were uncovered over a long period of erosion. Though they may look similar, these three sisters are different ages and made of different rock. In fact, unlike Panola and Stone Mountain, the rock at Arabia isn't granite at all. It's called gneiss and it's about 100 million years older than its two sisters. Rock like this isn't as barren as you might think. A unique ecosystem thrives here, filled with specially adapted plant and animal life. Arabia and Panola contain some of the most pristine examples of rock outcrop ecology in the country. Located just a few miles east of Atlanta, Panola Mountain was purchased by the state of Georgia in 1972. Because of the valuable plant life found on the Panola granite, Panola Mountain became Georgia's first conservation park. It was kind of a different line of thinking for state parks to be a conservation park, and most state parks, are, their main goal is recreation. When Panola was established and became a park, their whole goal was preservation and education and they wanted to preserve a 100-acre granite rock that was still pretty much in its natural or pristine condition. And it's getting pretty rare to find those kind of resources, especially this close to Atlanta. Panola Mountain is a national natural landmark, a title it shares with the Grand Canyon and the Okefenokee Swamp. Since its purchase, the park has expanded from 500 acres to over 1,000 acres, encompassing more habitat than Panola Mountain itself. 40 acres are open to the public. The public trails wind across bare rock, along stream beds, and offer a good workout in a natural setting. Though the mountain itself is not open to the public, the park hosts many events like this one, Geology Day, 
which offers a glimpse at the mountain and the unusual life that calls it home. Naturalist Scott Ranger leads this exciting workshop. How many of you have been out to Panola Mountain itself? Raise your hand if you've been out to the big mountain. You have? One of the rangers is raising his hand. You're going to discover once we're out there that this is a very special place. Why this? The day begins with a brief geology lesson. We're a very, very, very old landscape. Next, the real fun begins with a hike to the top of Panola Mountain. As you see rock that's wet, do step flat-footed. Because so many protected plant species live on the mountaintop, Scott makes certain that everyone understands how fragile the life on a granite outcrop is. There are plants and organisms on every last piece of this mountain. Most of us are woefully ignorant of the land that we're on. We are now so far removed from living by and close to the land the things that our great-grandfathers knew about living in the land are gone. So a park like Panola is a great place to go to get a reattached to the land. This granite came as a, what's called a pluton, rising up, melting its way through country rock. Once the 13 or so kilometers of stuff that was above this was eroded off, we exposed the mountain. As you look up from here on the mountain, you're seeing what is called an exfoliation pattern. Exfoliation is a type of erosion that causes layers of rock to peel away like an onion. Over the years, this sort of erosion has helped pave the way for many plant species to take root. I think easily the surprise is how gorgeous it is and how much timber there is on the top of this mountain because they think of Stone Mountain being bare, but Panola is very pristine, no, no sign of man, there's no roads, there's no markings, you're just walking on beautiful rock covered with lichens and with trees all around it and I think that's the, easily the biggest surprise that people have on this mountain because there's just very few places left like it. We have a really nifty lichen growing down here on the ground. That on both Panola and Arabia Mountains, the most pervasive species is lichen. Lichens are a very fascinating organism because they are two organisms from two totally separate kingdoms growing together as one. It is a fungus growing with an algae. Lichen grows very slowly. Some species only cover an area about the size of a postage stamp every 100 years. At Panola and Arabia Mountains, lichen serves as a pioneer species, the first to venture out and make its home along the granite surface. If anybody spots a grasshopper, please make a big to-do about it. Lichen also provides a natural camouflage for specially adapted organisms like this one, the lichen grasshopper, which has adapted its coloring to mimic the lichen itself. There's another one right there. These grasshoppers can be found in abundance during the summer months on the granite outcrops, along with other equally adapted creatures such as the lichen spider. He can camouflage himself pretty well and just virtually disappear into the rock. Many plants on these mountains can be found in solution pits, bowl-shaped craters carved into the surface of the rock. Weather, exfoliation, and chemicals released by lichens help transform the stone to soil, making way for a variety of plants. During wet periods, these small gardens come to life. The solution pits that form by erosion turn into, when they get large enough, we call them a vernal pool. They have water in them whenever it rains. That allows for a population of plants and animals that will live in them that can tolerate periodic periods without water in them. They can live for three or four weeks during a long drought. Pretty soon, rain's gonna come and they'll have an inch or two of water in it. Through the dry heat of summer, many plants lie dormant on these mountaintops. As the temperature drops, a spectacular display of color emerges. And the star of the show is the Confederate daisy. Late September looks more like spring at the top of these mountains, with brilliant yellows and contrasting greens peeking out among the cracks and depressions in the rock. The yellow daisy, or confederate daisy, is an annual, so it has to grow from new seed every year. 
Confederate daisy is actually a sunflower, not really a daisy. It likes open sun, so obviously in an area like Panola and Arabia where you have, in Stone Mountain, where you have lots of open sun, it grows quite well. It only grows in the areas where the soil is built up enough and around these little gardens, the solution pits, where there is enough soil for the roots to grow down several inches into the ground. In early April, a different kind of beauty emerges here the brilliant reds of diamorpha, a plant exclusive to these rock outcrops. Diamorpha is one of the, the fun plants of the granite outcrops of the southeast. It's found on virtually every flat rock granite outcrop in the southeast, and when it's showy, it is really showy. This mass of red that leads up to income tax day when it turns into a mass of white as the flowers come out. The rarest plants on these outcrops are also among the smallest. Pool Sprite and Black Spored Quillwort are two federally endangered plants found side by side in the solution pits of Arabia Mountain. Georgia's native plants are the foundation of our ecosystem. Invasive exotics like Chinese privet can sneak in and quickly overtake a landscape, leaving no room for natives to grow. Panola is not immune to these invaders, and it takes a small army to hold them back. In the past few years, we've taken on more of a land management responsibility. I get to donate a certain amount of my time to these projects, like uh, establishing native grasses back to the park and removing privet. Panola also invites the public to help hold back exotic species. We have people who come to our privet poles who are involved in the Georgia Native Plant Society and the Georgia Botanical Society. But then we get a mix of folks who are just families who may have read an article in the paper that Panola Mountain's having a privet pole. I wanted to do some volunteer work. I love being outdoors and love to work in the woods. Wanted to help get rid of non-native species. It's a very hardy plant. It grows to be trees. And it takes so long. Volunteer groups like AmeriCorps have also joined the fight to help get rid of invasives. So this is actually the second year um, AmeriCorps has helped out with the Panola project. Uh, we are removing privet, Chinese privet, helping the rangers do that. Being part of a team is really rewarding because you can accomplish more together than what you could on your own. I think the great thing about this is because we're actually removing things, like it's really easy to see what we're doing and you can see how much progress we're making and it just makes it really nice at the end of the day to look at, look back and say, oh, well, we cleared this much today. It's like really visible. Just a few miles up the road, Davidson Arabia Mountain Nature Preserve contains over 2,000 acres of diverse habitat. The premier attraction here is Arabia Mountain. Formed about 375 million years ago, Arabia Mountain is much older than Panola or Stone Mountain. It has been a place of reverence for centuries. Native Americans held a special connection with the rock. Today, the mountain is open for all to enjoy. Arabia Mountain is a very unique place. You could come out here and take a hike up the mountain and go up and you can uh, see this great view, 360 degrees, you can look all the way around. The reflection of the pools on top of the mountain where the endangered plant species are. You just get a very peaceful feeling from being up there. A lot of people like to go up there to meditate, sit and watch the sunset. The sun rises up there great. So it's, it has its own soul, I think. In the early part of the 20th century, the mountain served a very different purpose. Unlike Panola, the rock at Arabia Mountain was substantially quarried. It's hard to imagine today, actually, when you come out here, the scale of industrial activity that used to go on out here. We have old pictures and old films where there's railroads and steam engines and hundreds and hundreds of men with jackhammers and, and, and sledgehammers and rock-cutting machines breaking rock and steam and, and iron and 
Today it's all grown back up in trees and, and you think it's very pristine, but when, when you see the imagery from, from those times, this was a large scale industrial activity out here. Slowly but surely the world changed and the, the demand for that sort of, of rock quarrying passed on. So what the Davidson family did, they made it happen that they could offer to donate about 550 acres or so you know, to DeKalb County uh, to, be the, to be what's the heart of Arabia Mountain. Davidson Arabia Mountain Nature Preserve has since expanded to encompass over 2,000 acres, providing a natural escape from urban life. Unlike Panola Mountain, most of Arabia is open to the public. The outcrop is easily accessible through trails, and a paved bike path makes Arabia Mountain one of the most popular urban biking destinations in the state. This open-door policy hasn't always worked toward preserving the serene environment at the park. From the 70s through the early 90s, the park was left largely unmanaged, and it suffered from vandalism and abuse. And it just kind of became the hangout, you know, where people went to uh, get, drink some beer, break some bottles, you know, shoot off a, a gun or two every once in a while. And, and, you know, that was kind of the history. It was kind of a rough area to go. An extensive effort has returned Arabia Mountain to its original state. It has since become a wonderful place to experience and learn about nature. Deer and wild turkey can be seen wandering among the rocks and forested areas of the park, and the pools of water which collect in the quarried areas of the park provide unusual habitat for aquatic species. Every year, this pool is a breeding ground for salamanders. Park ranger Mary Terry takes a special interest in this population of amphibians. We have two different species that breed in the pools, uh, the marble salamander and uh, the spotted salamander. And so you have these wonderful ball, big balls of the spotted salamander egg masses in there and then the small um, larval stage of the marble salamander at the same time. But somehow we get uh, great populations of these salamanders out there. From the rock outcrop to the bike path to the miles of trails which wind through the park, Arabia Mountain has something for everyone. This group is getting their start early. What's our theme today? Monarch, monarch butterflies! Yay! Okay, has anybody seen a monarch before? Well, it's called Little Explorers of Arabia, and I have a two and a half year old son named Andrew who was eager to socialize and be outside, and we have a real passion for hiking and backpacking, and I wanted to expose him to the outdoors and we discovered the nature preserve right after we moved out here and decided to come for a picnic one day and we're fortunate enough to meet Mary Terry the park ranger. The first day that we met her we discovered a world of caterpillars and I just had a total inspiration that this would be something good to share with other little kids. Who's ready to go hunting now? We're just getting them out, hiking a little bit, and just showing them things as, as we walk. There's always something in nature that you can find to talk about. I, I brought out one of the books today, if anybody's really interested in butterflies and moths. This is one of the best books. And a lot of you introduce nature to them as a child, they really will be much more interested in it and help take care of the world. And so it's very important that they, they get interested in it and feel comfortable in it. I think she likes getting the butterfly cap put on her because she loves little baseball caps and she'll wear those. It calms kids to be in nature. They're just a whole new kid when they're outside. Nature and um, conserving the environment are very important benefits that both my husband and I try to teach our children. Um, and it's just really important that they be exposed to as many different animals and, and their natural habitat and just learn about the importance of conserving everything that we have. All right, bye! Well, I think that all the residents of the DeKalb County area are extremely fortunate in that the green space monies has made this nature preserve possible. You know, a few minutes away, you're on the interstate and stuck in traffic, and if you just drive right around the corner, you can be in a place of solitude and peace and really get some good spiritual time and some exercise at the same time.
Department of Natural Resources Junior Ranger Program is a great way for young people to have fun while learning about the outdoors. By following the guidelines in the Junior Ranger Activity Book, kids will experience nature, explore Georgia's history, and enjoy outdoor recreation. They can work through the manual on their own or by attending a day camp or workshop at a state park. Activity books are available at Georgia's state parks and historic sites or online. For more information, visit this website. The rock outcrops at Arabia and Panola Mountains are just a part of what these parks hold. Wetlands, forests, lakes, rivers, and a vast array of wildlife can be found throughout. In 1998, an alliance of civic leaders began building a connection between these parks and other valuable properties in the area. The Arabia Alliance, which is shorthand for the Arabia Mountain Heritage Area Alliance, is a conservation organization in a sense, but it's also a community building organization because the alliance seeks to uh, gather all of the different interests together in this part of the world. We want to have a pedestrian connection between Arabia and the South River. The ultimate goal of the Alliance is to designate this a national heritage area, which will help preserve key natural resources like Arabia and Panola, as well as other green areas and cultural landmarks. Knowing that Arabia and Panola are kind of the linchpins or the, the primary resources, there are a number of properties that needed to be protected that would provide connection between those tracks, as well as properties that had their own unique story to tell. And that's the important part of the National Heritage Area, is telling those cultural pieces and connecting them to the land. One of the key properties in the Heritage Area is Vauder's Farm. Just up the road from Arabia Mountain, the rolling fields of Vauder's Farm serve as a reminder of days gone by, when DeKalb County was a center of agriculture. Mr. Vauder's grew up in North Georgia, and then he was a school teacher, and then he decided he wanted to be a farmer. This land was relatively inexpensive because it was eroded old cotton land. So he had to restore the land. He actually planted kudzu. It's hard to believe someone would intentionally plant kudzu, but he had to plant kudzu to stabilize what he had there. DeKalb County had uh, over 50 dairy farms, and he had one of the last dairy farms in DeKalb County, one of the small dairy farms. By our understanding of his history of the site, we hopefully are going to be able to interpret it even better. And that was one of the great um, acquisitions. And that, in essence, is going to be the northern gateway to the National Heritage Area because there's no way that you cannot drive by that property and just recognize the beauty of that pastoral picture. Other parts of the Heritage Area are smaller, but also tell an important part of the history here. This small cemetery, nestled in a forest behind a neighborhood, is the final resting place for generations of people. It's been said that this land was once a Native American burial ground. Later, it became a slave cemetery and was passed on to the Flat Rock community, a lineage of people that predates DeKalb County. Johnny Wakes and Vera Whitaker, whose ancestors are buried here, have been working with the Alliance to have this cemetery included in the heritage area. This is John Waits, which is this man here. Okay. Our family, all of our lives, our family on the fourth Saturday in August um, would always go to this cemetery and clean this cemetery before our church homecoming. So uh, I've always known about the cemetery all my life. A lot of uh, slaves are buried out there. It's a lot of families that was around uh, in the mid-1800s and the late 1800s up to the 1900s. We stopped burying there in 1957. Yeah, that's the one that they was talking about. Well, it's very important to me because these people that's buried there, they can't take care of themselves, and it's left up to us to do the job. Because there's so many that's broken. We hope to restore the stones. Uh, some of the stones have been broken. In the 60s, uh, we had a lot of people, a lot of kids that was going around destroying cemeteries. And uh, we just hope that we can go in there and restore some of the stones, but leave it mainly the way it is now. Connected to Arabia and Panola by the South River, the Monastery of Our Lady of the Holy Spirit is a cornerstone of the heritage area. The monastery sits on 2,000 acres of well-preserved land. This 
particular monastery, the Monastery of Our Lady of the Holy Spirit, was founded in 1944. And it was the first group of Americans that founded a Trappist monastery. The relationship of monasteries with nature goes back a, a long way. Monasteries have always been tied to the land. One of the vows that monks take is a vow of stability to a, to a place. When we came here in 1944, we bought an old plantation, a Honey Creek plantation. We monks uh, believe that that land was given to us as a heritage. So it's our hope to really try to protect it and preserve it. These are just a few examples of properties that tell the story, not only of this land, but of the people who have called it home for generations. We're excited that we have the opportunity to make these acquisitions. We know that when um, it's all said and done, we'll have a great connection from the DeKalb County Park System into the State Park System and even into the Rockdale System, and the, the final partner being the monastery. And it just makes a win-win for not only the citizens of today, but our, our natural um, species and the recognition of our culture. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible by a grant from Mary Hall Singleton and by the Imlay Foundation.